Chimera is delighted to bring you some of Scotland's most exciting new voices in our Brave New Words readings. Joining us from the shores of Loch Ness is Lindsay Stirling. Lindsay was born in Ayrshire and grew up in the Highlands of Scotland, reading lots of books, climbing mountains and exploring ruined castles. She studied archaeology and Celtic studies and now works as an archaeologist. Her writing is inspired by archaeology, Scottish and Scandinavian folklore and the Bible. Lindsay is reading from her 2017 debut novel, Eagle's Guard. Welcome, Aidan Broxon. I'm Falker. Warily, Aidan shook his hand, feeling the ice-like strength behind the courtesy. You may be curious as to who I am, said Falker, turning to lead the way towards the palace. I'm a wizard, the wizard, you could say, the king's advisor on all things magical and more. Aidan nodded. The explanation had not put him any more at ease, especially not after the stories his parents had told him the night before. I've heard you know a thing or two about magic, Falker said, not waiting for Aidan to reply. The guards may check you for weapons, but they never see the most dangerous one. Aidan followed the wizard out of the trees, keeping a step behind and trying to ignore the veiled threat in Falker's voice. He could now see the full extent of the palace, a big rectangular building with a grand doorway in the centre, a wide stair splayed out before it. But it was not towards the palace that Falker led him. Instead, they were walking across the grass to a strange archway Aidan had noticed earlier. They entered its shadow, and Aidan suddenly realised he could see none of the guards. He glanced back at the sunlit gardens, his heart beating loudly in his ears. You see, Aidan, Falker continued, still speaking as though it was a trivial conversation. You've brought a dangerous weapon into the palace, and I need to check you're not here to kill the king. Falker paused and stared at Aidan with those piercing grey eyes. You do seem very nervous. Before he could react, Aidan found himself pinned against the wall. Gort, the binder, twisted tightly around his wrists and ankles and up his arms and legs in a golden rope of light. He tried to squirm out of its reach, a cold sweat breaking out across his back, but he found he could not move. The wizard stared into his eyes, unblinking. The blinding silver glow of another rune sparked in Aidan's eyes. Sewell, the prophet. For a moment, confusion broke into his panic. What was the wizard going to do with Sewell? Then, a searing pain shot through his head, and Aidan could do nothing but screw up his eyes. He tried to lift his hands, but Gort glowed and tightened around him, burning against his skin. The pain in his head persisted, a ceaseless, blinding ache. What was happening to him? Why are you here? said Falker. Through the pain, Aidan's mind did not understand the question, but somehow the words were ripped from his mouth. I was sent for. The pain lessened instantly, and his eyes sprang open to stare coldly at the wizard. Falker had made him speak. He had used Sewell to steal the truth from his lips. Tell me then, said Falker, ignoring his expression. Why is a cloakmaker's son so skilled in magic? He should not answer, thought Aidan. His body writhed against the stone arch as he fought to stay silent. He closed his eyes, but it made no difference. He could still feel Sewell scouring his thoughts and putting words in his mouth. I like drawing the runes, said Aidan. Which runes, said Falker instantly. Any of them, Aidan choked. He felt helpless, powerless. He had no defence against such an attack. Falker's eyes narrowed. How many do you know? Aidan hesitated, but the pain seared behind his eyes more sharply than before. All of them, he blurted out. And who taught you, said Falker, his voice thundering in Aidan's ears. Aidan screwed up his eyes. No one, he gasped. No one taught me anything. Impossible, Falker whispered. How did you learn to use them? I taught myself, said Aidan defiantly, before Stuhl could steal his words. He opened his eyes to face the wizard. Falker considered him, searching Aidan's face for the truth. Aidan met his stare and gulped, but he refused to drop his eyes. Then, as suddenly as the pain had come, it vanished. Falker released him without warning, and Aidan fell to the ground, his knees smacking painfully onto the paving stones below. The light of the runes dissipated, and he flexed his arms freely once more. The wizard stood over him, silently watching. <laughs> 